All right, men, well, it's an honor to uh, share with you God's Word. We're in a series called Fight, and what we're doing is we're learning uh, to win the battles that matter most. Unfortunately, we're looking at a guy who didn't always win the big battles. His name is Samson. He was a guy that was called by God, set apart uh, for God's work, and yet he continued to self-destruct. In our last session, we saw the good news, though, that if a man lets his need drive him to God, then God will meet his deepest need. And today, we're going to look at Samson as he lets God do something in him, and then he ends up once again self-destructing. We're in Judges chapter 15. We'll uh, start in 19 and 20. And here's what Scripture says. The story goes on to say, Then God opened up the place, opened up the hollow place in Lehi, and water came out of it. Samson was thirsty. He called out to God. God answered his prayer and gave him water. When Samson drank, his strength returned and he revived. When you let your deepest need drive you to God, God will meet your deepest need. The Bible says, so the spring was called on Hakor, and it's still there in Lehi. Now, verse 20 is a really interesting verse, and if you're not careful, you can just read on by it and miss the power of it. Verse 20 says, Samson led Israel for how long, man? He led Israel for 20 years in the days of the Philistines. One verse summarizes 20 years of apparently effective leadership. One verse summarizes what looks like 20 years of living with integrity. One verse says, for 20 years, he led Israel in the days of the Philistines. In other words, it appears that for 20 years, he was on the right track. It looks like he'd put his troubles behind him. It looks like he's leading, and he was in a time of peace, prosperity, and relative freedom. But even though it looked like he was on the right track, Apparently, he had just buried his problems, ignored them, or done what so many of us do so well. He covered up his deeper issues, and he didn't deal with them. And again, if you fast forward to the end of the story, we're going to see him with his eyes gouged out. He's the laughing stock, and it raises the question, how does a man go from having so much God-given potential to being devastated and virtually destroyed in front of his enemies? And the answer is this. Most men don't ruin their lives all at once. They do it one step at a time. Isn't that true? Most of us, we don't go out one day and just blow our lives all at once. What we do is one small stupid thing followed by another small, stupid thing, and we ruin our lives one step at a time. We see this portrayed in Judges 16, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says one day. Everybody say one day. One day. This is the same way that King David's story starts out when he had the affair with Bathsheba. That story says one day when kings were supposed to be off to war, David was wandering around on the rooftop palace, and he saw Bathsheba, and he says, mm-hmm, get me some of that, okay? One day. Just a regular old day, the same way this story says, one day, Samson went to Gaza where he saw a prostitute. One day, the guy goes to Gaza. Now, what, where's Gaza? This is the Philistines' headquarters, okay? He's public enemy number one, and he travels from Zora about 25 miles into enemy territory to get him some action from a prostitute. The Bible says he went in to spend the night with her. The people of Gaza, his enemies were told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night saying, at dawn, we'll kill him. Think about this. Who is stupid enough to put so much at risk for something so small and insignificant? And the answer again is, many of us do it all the time. 
So many men do it all the time. He traveled 25 miles to go get him some action in enemy territory from a prostitute. Okay? Now, I did a little research just to figure out how many steps it takes if you're going to travel 25 miles. It takes about 56,250 steps to travel 25 miles. Think about this. How's a man ruin his life? All at once? No, typically what? One step at a time. It was amazing to think about this, is that he took 56,250 steps in the direction of danger. And he had 56,250 opportunities to stop and say, this is not worth it, and turn around and go back. The problem is, most of us don't ruin our lives all at once. We do it one step at a time. I don't know very many men who say, hey, my life goal is to be bankrupt, to be financially devastated. So in two weeks we get there. Most of us do it one bad financial decision at a time. I don't know any guys who just go one day, oh, guess what? Yesterday I was good. Today I'm a crack addict. Mm. <laughs> Got a lot done today. Oh, what happens? Starts out with one little hit of something, takes a little poke of something else. Next thing you know, we're, we're falling into more trouble one step at a time. Uh, most guys I know don't say, hey, I think today I'm going to go devastate my wife by getting me some action somewhere else. I mean, she's been a good wife for seven years, so I might as well screw things up by going and having a five-minute sexual session with somebody I don't know. Most guys will do that. But what happens? Girls at work, she's kind of cute, kind of talk, a little flirty flirty, a little hey touchy touchy, a hey little texty texty, a hey whoop whoop. All of a sudden, <laughs> one step at a time, we find ourselves doing something that is totally devastating. We end up losing the battles that matter most. But God is going to call us to fight because in us is the heart of a warrior. Unfortunately, uh, we have three steps that uh, often of us fall victim to and lose the battle. Let me show you uh, what men uh, often fall victim to. Uh, so many of us, like Samson, we taunt our enemy. That's what Samson did. He taunted his enemy. In fact, in uh, verse 3 of Judges 16, the Bible says, uh, but Samson lay there only until the middle of the night. So he's in enemy territory. They're plotting to kill him. The Bible says, then he got up and he took hold of the doors of the city gate together with two posts and he tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. Now, here's what he did. He went to the main entrance of their city. He took the doors that symbolized security. He ripped them off. These were not hollow core doors, according to one commentary. Uh, this one uh, scholar estimated that they would have weighed 700 pounds. And he takes these things and goes out and says, you think you're safe? You're not safe when I'm around. And he starts taunting his enemy. Men, we do that all the time. We think we can handle it. We taunt our enemy. Who is our enemy? Satan. He roars around like a lion seeking for someone to devour to wipe out. We're talking to destroy. Christianity is not a playground. It's a battleground. The stakes are high. His mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. He's, a, he's like a roaring lion, which comes from the cat family, which is another reason why I don't like cats, okay? Just saying. I, I taunt our cat. I, I don't like cats, but I have two of them because my kids like cats. One of my cats only has three legs. His name is Binky, but I call him Tripod, okay? <laughs> tripod, the cat. So, the, kid, the cat will get up and put his cat butt up on the counter, which is where I eat. That makes me sick. So I go up and taunt the cat. I get, I get, I get ah! Yeah. Ah! Because he can't swipe me because he's, 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 he's got no leg. <laughs> so one time I'm in a cat's face and the cat bites me right in the nose, stupid cat. 
taunting the enemy. And that's what we do as, as guys. We taunt the enemy. We put ourselves in stupid places. We, 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 we flirt with danger. We, we, uh, we're in financial trouble. So we say, hey, let's just go to the, 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 the auto mall and look around and just look at cars. Just look. <laughs> you know, we, we, we're in tr- financial trouble, so we, let's go look at boats. Let's just look at them. We're not going to buy anything. Hey, we're, we're vulnerable to sexual temptation, and so instead of putting filters up and, and guards up, we just leave our mobile devices open and our iPads fair game. We, we taunt the enemy doing stupid things. And that's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10, 12, he said, hey, guys, if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. The warrior taunts his enemy. The second thing Samson does is what we do so often. He rationalized the same old sin. He rationalized the same old sin. He goes back and is vulnerable to the wrong women in the wrong way over and over and over again. Verse 4 of Judges 16. Sometime later, he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. He's going for the wrong woman all over again, which so many of us, we rationalize the same old sin again and again. It's no big deal. I mean, you know, hey, I'm just looking. I'm not not touching. I'm not not doing anything. This isn't hurting anybody anyway. It's in anybody's business. This is my life. We rationalize the same old sin over and over again. Verse 5, we see how the story goes from bad to worse. Scripture says, the rulers of the Philistines went to Delilah and said, see if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him. Now, this story gets kind of long and and a little bit complicated. If you want to read it all, you can read it all in verses 6 through 14. But basically what he does is he starts kind of just messing with her. First, he says, hey, if you just tie me up with seven fresh straps. Okay, one version says thongs, but I can't bring myself to say tie me up with thongs or something (laughs) about that that's not right. He says, tie me up with seven fresh straps, and then I'll be as weak as any other men. So she ties him up with that, and then the Philistines come, and she says, the Philistines are upon you. He goes, and breaks out. And she's like, you lied to me, and the Philistines are mad. So she says to him again, tell me the secret of your great strength. Okay, he says, it's actually new ropes. So she ties him with new ropes, and again, he busts out. The third time, she's like, tell me, tell me, tell me. Okay, okay, okay. It's really seven braids of hair. If you weave my hair into the fabric and you tighten it with a pen, then I'll be as weak as any other. And he gets closer to the actual truth that the strength is found in his commitment to God not to cut his hair. And then, verse 15, she says to him, How can you say, I love you, when you won't confide in me? This is the third time you've made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. Verse 16, ladies, if you happen to be watching and you've been really enjoying me, Roughing up the men. This part is for you. If the shoe fits, wear it. (laughs) With such what? Men, help me out. With such nagging, nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was tired to death. (laughs) For some reason, that's just funny to me. (laughs) Day after day. She nags him until finally he says, I give up. I'm just going to tell you the truth. And he tells her the secret of his great strength. Think about this, men. Samson is strong enough to kill a thousand men with a jawbone. He's strong enough to rip off a 700-pound door and carry it above his head. But he's not strong enough to lead a woman. And how often do we see that today? I mean, you're strong on the softball field, or you're, you're strong at work, or you're strong in a gym, or you're strong out when you're hunting, but we're not strong enough to lay down our lives to serve and love and honor and nurture and lead a woman 
to where we're all closer to God in what we do. He's strong enough to do so much, and yet he's not strong enough to lead someone that he should really love. Verse 17, he caves in. So he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, he says, because I've been a Nazarite, set apart to God since birth. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as any other man. So she goes through the whole deal. The Bible says, verse 19, having put him to sleep on her lap, this is after she does all this, she called a man in to shave off his seven braids of his hair and begin to subdue him, and the Bible says, and his strength left him. What's the problem? He taunted his enemy. He rationalized the same old sin. And number three, Samson assumed his disobedience would never cost him. He assumed he'd get away with it again. Verse 20, she called out, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought, hey, I'll go out and free myself, shake myself free. I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know the Lord had left him. Verse 21, then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza. Binding him with bronze shackles, they set him to grinding in the prison. Hey, I'll go out as I did before. It's not going to cost me. I'll get away with it again. Hey, I'll explain it away again. Hey, I'll, I'll apologize again. Hey, it's not that big of a deal. And he didn't realize that the Lord had left him. How did he ruin his life? He didn't do it all at once. He did it like most of us, unfortunately, do, one step at a time. So, gentlemen, warriors, there's a fight you may need to fight. There's a fight you may need to win. There is a battle that matters a lot, and it's time for you to win it. And I'm going to ask you this. You may be on step number one, or you may be on step 56,249. I'm going to ask you right now, where have you stepped away from God? Where have you stepped away from God? So I've done it in a lot of different ways. Maybe you call yourself a committed Christian, but you really don't have time in his word. You don't have other men sharpening you, holding you accountable. You're lost in a lust-filled world telling yourself, hey, I want to do it again. I'll try not to do it again. I can't tell anybody. Uh, uh, uh. Maybe you're not leading your children spiritually not leading your wife spiritually. Maybe you're just going to church and you're not doing anything. You're just a dude that takes up a seat. You're not engaged in the battle. <laughs> you're not serving, using your gifts. You're not giving. You're not making a big difference. You're just a dude with a butt in a seat. Where have you stepped away from God? And here's the key. Don't miss this. You are only as strong as you are honest. You are only as strong as you are honest. If you find yourself stepping away from God, here's what you do. I've stepped away from him. I've stepped away from him. Oh, I've got to be honest. I'm not living with integrity here. I'm not seeking him here. I'm not serving him here. So what do you do? You ready for it? Don't miss it because it's really simple and it's really powerful. If you're going the wrong way, what do you do? You turn around, and guess who's going to be right there to welcome you? Your heavenly Father who loves to make weak men strong. Watch what happens when Samson realizes, I've blown it big time. We see one of the greatest grace-filled verses in all of the Bible. Where was his strength? It was in his hair, which was now shaved off, which now publicly said, you've disavowed your God and you were stupid in every way. And what does the Bible say in verse 22? But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. Why is that verse in the Bible? I believe because God shows it symbolizes my grace, that if you'll turn back to me, I will forgive every sin that you've ever committed, and I will make you new, and I specialize in turnaround stories. Because, oh yeah, we have an enemy who loves to make strong men weak, but we have a God who loves to make weak men strong. Gentlemen, 
If you're heading in the wrong way, stop and turn around and watch as our God of grace is ready to receive you.